Hi everyone, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com and today I'm bringing you along for another vlog style video and in this video I'm just going to show you something that I've been asked about a bit and that is what we do for teething because my youngest guy, he is 17 months old at the time of this filming and he is really teething. He's working on three eye teeth right now. He has one that's come through pretty much all the way and then the other three are all kind of coming through through at the same time. So he's really going through some teething right now. Thankfully, my kids have not had too hard of a time teething. It's gone pretty well. And I have lots of different things that I like to do for them to help them through this. And so I wanted to share what we do for teething as well as just show a bit of our day and also show you kind of where we're at with our kitchen update as well. So this morning I'm just getting some breakfast made. It's just a typical weekday morning here for us. So I'm doing oatmeal that I had put soaking the night before, adding a bunch of butter, letting that cook. I try to get a bunch of breakfast prep and supplements and all that kind of stuff out of the way before I go get my youngest up out of bed. It just makes it easier to get a bunch of this out of the way before I go get him up. He's just waking up, so it's time for me to go in and get him out. So for the most part, he's been sleeping through the night. Once in a while, I think when his teeth are bothering him a little bit more, he'll still wake up once at night every now and then, but most nights he's sleeping all the way through. And so he did wake up once last night so I can tell his teeth are bothering him a bit as they're coming through. So I'm gonna go ahead and give him some teething tablets. So I love these Highland teething tablets. They have a day formula and a night version. So during the day, I'll just give him the daytime one, I'm giving him some right now before breakfast. I'll just give them kind of on an as needed basis. And then I'll always give him the nighttime ones when I know he's teething before he goes to sleep for his nap or before he goes to bed for the night. So giving him some of those daytime ones now. And he looks like he's feeling pretty good today, pretty well today. And so I'm gonna go ahead and get him some breakfast. Starting him off with some kefir in one of these little silicone squeezies. And then he's also having some scrambled eggs, some butter and some sausage. I'm also giving them their supplements. So they're taking some chelator. All the kids are chelating right now. And then they're also getting their cod liver oil. Uh, I'm standing in my wheelchair. 
highlighting in the smoke factory. Another thing that I really like to do when my kids are teething is the homeopathic cell salts for magnesium. So this one's Mag Foss, and I'll give them those at least once a day, usually a little while after breakfast so that their mouth has been empty for a little while. And then more often, like maybe two or three times a day if I really feel like they're really having a hard time, but usually once a day is what I'll do when I know that they're really teething. And that really seems to help because I did hear that Magnesium is really important for teething symptoms and it does seem to help keep them happier and more comfortable when they have enough magnesium in different forms. Another thing that we really love to use for teething are amber teething necklaces. So amber has a certain acid in it that is very anti-inflammatory. So when amber jewelry is worn on the skin, the skin can absorb that acid and um, it really helps with um, anti-inflammatory properties and helping to relieve pain and swelling and different things. So when they have it around their neck, it really helps with pain in the mouth area since that's nearby. So like I said, my kids have had a pretty easy time with teething and we've always used amber necklaces. So I feel like they help, but it's just something that we like to do. And this is again, something that everybody can choose to do or not do based on their own research, but it is something that we've decided to do. We've never had any safety issues or anything. Um, some people feel more comfortable not leaving them on when they're asleep, but yeah, we just keep an eye, make sure the length is safe so that it's not a hazard. And we have had really great results with it. And then this morning we're just having some reading time. My second oldest is really doing well with the reading, really taking off with that. And so he's at the point where he's actually reading his younger brothers a story, which is really fun to have somebody else to be able to read to them. And then I can tell this youngest guy is doing better, feeling better from his teething because he's actually sitting there and just looking at books for a little while on his own, which is always so nice. Some other things that we like to do for helping with teething are giving them different things to chew on. So I actually like giving him a whole apple. Sometimes I will slice it into slices, um, but he really loves, especially when he's teething, a whole apple. I think the chewing on something like that of that texture is really helpful and soothing. Also, I in my research, a lot of biting and chewing and exercise for the mouth is supposed to be really helpful from like a myofunctional therapy sort of a standpoint. And so when he has things like this, I just, you know, he's supervised. I make sure he's not biting off anything big that could be a choking hazard. And I just keep an eye on him and he's always done great. It's never been an issue. I do think that it helps him feel better and kind of give relief when he's teething. Another thing that I'll sometimes give my kids is celery sticks. So celery is supposed to have something in it that kind of helps numb the jaws a little bit. He wasn't too crazy about the celery today, but it was fun to just offer it to him and see if he wanted to chew on it. But that's something that I have always offered now and then when they're teething and it seems to help. And another thing that I like to do is have a little kid safe toothbrush, dip it in some filtered water and put it in the freezer. And then when it's frozen nice and cold, then I'll let them have that. He did chew on it, but not while I was filming him. So he decided to not really chew on it while being filmed, but he did play with it a little bit and don't mind his hands from playing outside. They're all dirty from playing in the dirt. But anyway, the frozen toothbrush can be soothing if they feel like chewing on it. So sometimes that's something that I'll offer. Something else that can be really helpful is a diluted essential oil blend of lavender, frankincense, and copaiba in fractionated coconut oil. Just put a few drops of each so it's pretty diluted and then uh, have it in a roller bottle and then put a little bit on their jaw. So if they're really teething, this can help offer some relief as well. I usually try to do this farther away from the homeopathic remedies, the cell salts or the teething tablets because they can interfere with homeopathy and essential oils can be like too strong and a little bit too powerful and can interfere with the homeopathy being very effective. So I do try to space that out a little bit, but that's just another thing that I've used that seems to help a lot too. Another thing that we really love to do as much as we can, but that really has benefits for when they're teething too, is spending time outdoors barefoot, 
because grounding and walking around outside barefoot has great um, calming, soothing properties. It's anti-inflammatory. And I just know that little kids, whenever they're fussy for any reason, being outside just helps so much. So that's something that we like to do. And we've been having beautiful weather lately. Finally, it's been warming up and being nice and mild. We've had such a cold, like early springtime so far. So we've had a few days here and there. And today is one of them where it's nice and warm and mild. So we're really taking advantage of that. So he's got his apple outside. He's walking around. Just, he's so happy out here. Mid-morning, kind of coming back to my day, I actually filmed, or I thought I was filming me putting together what we're having for dinner tonight, but it turns out I forgot to actually push the button to start filming, and so I didn't, but here at least you can see what I have put together. It's beef neck bones and beef shanks in filtered water with salt, pepper, onion, garlic, and bay leaves, and I'm just gonna make a beef stew for that, so I'm starting this about mid-morning, and I'm gonna have it in the oven about 300 degrees Fahrenheit just to make a nice beef stew, meat stock sort of thing, and I'll add some vegetables a little bit later on. And then while we're in the kitchen, here is a little closer up look at the progress that we have been accomplishing here. So cabinets are in. It just, we changed the layout a little bit. So it's actually more usable. It feels more open. It feels taller and more spacious with those cabinets going all the way to the ceiling. We've removed that um, dead space little header type of thing that was up there before. New cabinets above and below. Move the dishwasher so now that somebody can be cooking and then someone else can be working with the dishwasher if they want to. So a lot more usable space. The countertop <laughs> plywood is obviously just temporary. Pretty soon we're going to get a quartz countertop to go on there. We have a floor coming in pretty soon as well later, a backsplash going in later. So we're making progress. Really exciting. Really enjoying the recent little updates here. Here's some a little peek at what it looked like when we had everything just gutted and torn out and we were just like starting over, putting the cabinets in. It was pretty crazy. Really thankful for some family members who came and helped us out with that. And yeah, really excited to get the rest of this going and put together. And I'll keep you guys updated as we finish the rest of our kitchen. Now it's time for some lunch for the youngest guy. He usually eats lunch a little bit earlier than the rest of us. So he's having some roast, some beef roast, some carrots. These are actually purple carrots, which is kind of crazy, but cooked carrots. This is just dinner leftovers from the night before. So roast meat, carrots, some butter, some sauerkraut, and he's got his apple, another apple along too. And then it's funny because when he's teething and chewing on stuff and chewing on an apple, he really doesn't eat a lot of it. A lot of it just comes out he just takes bites and spits it out because I guess it feels good to, to bite it. But here's the aftermath from his lunch. It is a huge mess. There's food all over the place, all over the floor. Lots of uneaten apple. And speaking of apple, some of you guys might remember when if you've been with me through his earlier journey of starting solids and doing baby gaps and all that, I waited for the longest time to introduce fruit for him just because I find that my kids do a lot better when we just wait a good long while before introducing fruit. So he did not have any fruit until well after a year and he's almost a year and a half and he's been having fruit for a few months now. And I just very slowly and carefully introduced it and he's been doing really well with it. So it was the right time. And so that's where that's at. After he turns 18 months, I am gonna do another kind of what my toddler eats in a day video for 18 months. And I'll update you guys a little bit more in depth about what all he's eating right now and where he's at on gaps. But yes, here's the aftermath for lunch today. Not much apple was eaten, just mostly chewed on, but he did eat his meat and other things for lunch and made a huge mess, but that's real life, right? So I have some cleanup to do. And then after lunch, it's time for him to go down for his nap. So I'm going ahead and giving him some of the teething tablets for nighttime or for sleep before he goes down. And then he's going to go ahead and have his nap. After he's down for his nap, I'm gonna make some lunch for the rest of us. So we're having some sandwiches. This is kind of a little leftover sandwich that I've been liking to do lately. So it's like a grilled cheese sandwich with leftover roast, beef roast, and then I also add some sauerkraut. 
with the raw cheddar. Kind of let that melt toast on one side. I had to pause the video here while I realized that all of my spatulas were dirty while I quickly washed a spatula up. And then I'm just flipping it over and letting it grill on the other side, letting the cheese melt a little more, and then that's gonna be ready to eat. And then I am enjoying this along with some cut carrots. These are those rainbow carrots that come in different colors. And some homemade ranch dip that is sour cream, mayonnaise, dill, onion powder, garlic powder, salt and pepper mixed together. Dipping those and then having it alongside the sandwich. After lunch and while the littlest guy is napping, I'm gonna go ahead and get some work done. So I had lots of computer work to do today. Just checking emails, responding to you guys in my groups and membership, and then just getting a bunch of stuff done during nap time. And then for the rest of the day, it was a kind of a busy day. We did some yard work outside that I didn't get a chance to film. We're trying to plant some more grass, get some grass seed in to kind of reseed some bare areas, and then also grass in new areas where there wasn't lawn before, kind of updating some landscaping out there and improving that so i'll have to show you guys what we're doing there in another vlog video what else did we do this afternoon just put stuff away little things around the house that needed to be done all kinds of random stuff it wasn't super exciting just you know house stuff and then I had dinner we had our beef stew and then after dinner we're doing baths so another teething thing that i find helps a lot is epsom salt baths because again it's just another good way to get some magnesium in and so before bed he's having an epsom salt bath and i find that that helps with relaxation and sleep it's also a detox support and like i said just another way to get in magnesium to help with teething and lots of other things usually we take the teething necklaces off during the bath but didn't happen today and that's why they're still on in the bath all right i hope that you enjoyed coming along for another vlog style video. I hope that you enjoyed the tips for the different things that we like to do to help with teething. Hope that you enjoyed seeing the kitchen updates and the other things that we were up to today. Be sure and check out that description box for links to free ebooks and other goodies. I have some new meal plans down below that you can check out. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with anyone else who you think would like it or find it interesting or helpful. And if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I get out new videos every week on nourishing recipes and natural living. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.